Hey guys, Jake here. We're at Pear Tree Ranch and we're working with Remy. Uh, we're going to do our update video for what we worked on for the week. Today is a Sunday and we literally just got back. I've been teaching a trail riding experience for the last four days. So we finished the clinic and we're here to film the update. So real busy week. <clears throat> this week we did for all the training horses, including Miss Remy, tarp therapy and we're going to just talk about what is that there's lots of different things and uh, we're queuing up to leave on tuesday for road to the horse uh, i'm going i've been coaching for the last five six months tick maynard who's going to be in the uh, road to the horse competition if you don't know what that is it's the world championship of colt starting so they take a untouched colt and over three days get them started to ride and do a um, whole course obstacle challenge rail pattern and the whole thing so I've been preparing tick to uh, compete in that with Colt starting stuff and so very excited to get to be there and support him so we got lots going on uh, with that as well um, through that competition if you've seen it you see the blue tarp is kind of a famous joke about uh, the ultimate horse training tool and what we're going to use is this tarp and it's folded up I have it tied on one end, and what I like to do is teach a horse to drag it. There's a couple of different ways, uh, hashtag shameless plug, go check out our three-part series on Patreon about dragging an obstacle, and this is a lot of times where I might start with my groundwork. And what I show in that is dragging it along the horse on the ground, putting the rope behind the horn, and doing it that way so it drags out there and I can pull it and let it get have it get closer to them or further away as they're gaining confidence <clears throat> the hard part when you do it that way is you can run the risk of if the horse gets scared and kicks they can wrap their leg around the rope of the tarp dragging out there and that can get uh, kind of a yucky rope burn so what we've been doing with these horses as we build them up is first can I rub them with the tarp and then tie the tarp to the horn where it drags off their side and we work them on a circle. What this usually elicits is the feeling of being chased. Horses are prey animals and they very can easily feel chased by something and it elicits their flight response, their escape behavior. So they just try to run away from it. Well, because it's hooked to them, it just keeps scaring them because they are running. You wouldn't just do that right off the bat. You gotta build a horse up with some confidence things. But if we can get them some confidence and then go to this, what the horse learns is if I want that to stop chasing me, I have to do the opposite of my DNA and that stop when I feel chased. And it, they realize they're in control of stopping the tarp. <clears throat> I really like this because what it will do is for a horse like this, we know we've just been riding her at the walk, but as we build up, if I'm on her and she gets to going fast, all of a sudden she could get triggered by her oh no, behavior, uh, her prey animal instincts, and just try to get away from me. Well, I'm on her. So she, that's what elicits bucking and running away is they're just trying to get away from the human on their back. Well, we can teach them a better behavior to do without a human on their back by doing this tarp dragging. And that's why we're using it for this horse as well as all the other training horses. They learn they're in control versus just run harder to get away from it. Just kick it and make a mess. Before we go to the tarp, we're gonna do a little warm up. So that's just kind of preface. This is where we're going. <clears throat> I wanna move her around first. All we've done is catch, halter, lead, brush her off and get the saddle on, which you guys have seen a lot of times. So um, we don't wanna take up all your viewing time with those things that you've kind of gotten comfortable seeing us do. <clears throat> I'm just gonna move her around here a little bit. I like that she's checking in and considering coming in. Good girl. Love how straight she's coming in. Just gonna get a little movement, give us a chance to warm that body up, tighten our cinch. It'd be an important thing I'd wanna make sure is that my cinch is snug when we're going to do something like this and drag. Good job, good job. 
<clears throat> by just having the tarp here at the middle, we get to just hang out and be by it. She gets exposed to it, sees it, um, can just be around and not have it mean pressure. So it's kind of a nice thing to have it in here as I'm working and not, you know, pretending like it doesn't even exist. You're a good kid. Okay, let's check that cinch. We'll get our left lead canner here. I'm around it, please. Good. Okay. I'm gonna come over here in the open and do a burp beer too. So I'm just holding my arm and waiting for her to be still to kind of give me permission to pass that rope. Good girl. Again, these horse burpees, as I call them, gives us a chance to put that horse in a bind and have them have to think their way out of it. All right, I'm feeling pretty good. So what we'll do next, I gotta be organized with my tools here. If I'm gonna start on this left side from where she is, she's gonna go out and around that way. The first day I thought I had myself set up and when she got scared by the tarp and went to run, <clears throat> the rope was fouled kind of under the tarp and under my foot. And so I had to kind of let the rope go. She turned the wrong way and was kind of tangled in the rope. Not bad, it just was on the off side. So she ran, ah, scared of the tarp, and just stopped herself. <clears throat> we got her on, got, you know, picked up the lead rope, no big deal, and back to it. But I want to minimize silly things like fouling with my tools. So I'm just looking for her to read me that I just want to rub her with this. And I'm not going to chase her. We've talked about that with lots of things, how we're not going to chase this horse around. Okay. <clears throat> So if I can reach up here and rub her with that, now I have it in place. So see, the tarp is over the rope. So that's what I wanna be mindful of as we're going. So let's reorganize that stuff before I do anything. So if she right away is scared and runs, I have all the rope organized that I can slip it to her, okay? And that the tarp isn't where it can be hung up on my feet and trip me up. Now, the knot I'm going to use is a clove hitch. See how I have the tail of this rope. I'm going to take that tail and put it under and lay it over the horn. It's under that other part. And then you take the tail, put it under, set it down over the top. Clove hitch. It's important not to know. Okay. Got room for one extra. So now, that's on there, and if I could just stand here and rub her, <clears throat> that would be great. A Little bit of wind blowing today, so you'll have times where the wind can flutter the tarp and startle the horse, <clears throat> and we just gotta get the horses to understand that they're in charge of keeping that tarp from doing things by standing still. It's the opposite of what their DNA tells them to do. This is a great thing of a horse learning self-control. Now on the first day, again, she was scared, she ran, I fouled the rope, we got that taken care of, no big deal. I'll drop in a clip at some point where you can see that we did film the first little go.
to kind of have the um, how it started versus how it's going. And then on the second day, she kicked it with her hind leg. And when she kicked it, you can see it's long, it wrapped up under her leg, wrapped around her leg. And then she's like, oh, I stuck. So she finally just stopped and stood there, which was great. That's what she needed to learn. Don't fight, just stop. Okay, stand still. And then she had to figure out how to let me get her leg off, undone. Okay, it was a great taming thing. And it wasn't a production. I just went over there and <clears throat> got it unwrapped around her leg. I let her back out, did it again. Got herself all hung up, got her to come to me, get it out from under her leg, got it unwrapped. The third time she went out, she kicked it. One time it started to wrap. She stopped, looked at me, walked right to me and was like, That's, I did that again. Just let me unwrap it and then she didn't do it anymore. It was great. It was really cool to watch her figure out that process. So as much as I don't want her to do that, maybe she'll do that and you guys can kind of see that today. But we're mostly kind of going over again where have we progressed to? So I want to move her out and around me. And if she'll go and stop and not get herself scared, that's everything that we're looking for. I know, I saw you were awesome. Okay, you can just stand right back there and I can rub you. You're a good kid. Okay, so now I'm going to pick up my stick so that I can have a little bit of create a little distance. So I'm pushing nose, neck, shoulder, out and away. <clears throat> There's the beginning of some speed. So instead of getting going, she's stopping herself. This is everything that we're kind of training for here. Especially as we are getting kind of where it's time to start considering how do we ride her a little bit faster than a walk. Blocking the nose and the neck till it goes out and around. There, little trot trot and she stops. I'm not looking to rush her to get all wound up. Again, the whole point of this is if they're trying to put the brakes on to keep that thing still, that's what we're doing. That's the goal. I'll do this when I uh, first get a horse used to the saddle, if they buck, teach them, hey, just stop. Okay, just stop and I can help you. Drive that front end out and away. Get her going a little bit. Super job. There, see the wind's blowing it, so she sees it, is attentive. Okay, this hand has got to try to be ready if I need to block, <clears throat> keep her from jumping on top of me. So now I'm going to push a little more, a little more, a little more. Good. See, as we go faster, we get a little bigger response. Good. Now, we don't want them scared of it. We're not trying to scare them to scare them, but we do need to get horses bothered. Scaring a horse, bothering a horse, two different things. You want to be mindful of that. That's good progression. So she held that trot for longer. She moved with a little more forward and then kind of asked the question about coming in and arced around at a little bit of speed. Yeah, you did. You were great. You got to bother them and then teach them how to get themselves unbothered by doing healthy behaviors. Just taking a deep breath won't make you feel better as a human being when you're bothered. But if you train yourself with breathing exercises, you can train to have a deep breath be a trigger to settle your mind and your body and your emotions. Good. Okay. Super. How'd you get so good at this? There, so see, that little bit, that needs to happen. She needs to get scared. What'd she do? I'm gonna kick, no, I'm not, that's a bad idea. Put your feet down and stand still, right? That's what's happening. I saw you were great. You were great.
it's like driving in traffic and somebody does something dumb and you have to stop yourself from saying bad words in the car with the children in there or inappropriate hand gestures. How do you have self-control? Good. Canner and canner. She held her lead the whole time. She never lost a hind leg. So just like we get a horse used to a saddle and a rider, if we get them really good and ready to these bigger things, life becomes simple. So little old me sitting up there, okay, bouncing around becomes less scary. She's like, ah, pff, you're nothing, cowboy. Remember that time I drug a tarp? <laughs> that thing was huge. Good. <sighs> Now, that there is one of the biggest moments, maybe of the whole training thing. And it could have really easily gone unnoticed. What she just did right there was she took her nose, she touched my hand, and checked in with me. To this point, this horse has been here for months now, she has not been able to take her nose and touch my hand without then trying to bite me. So anytime I'd go in to halter her, if I ever offered her that opportunity, she would go boop, ow. she couldn't do it. She couldn't do it. So now, all on her own, she touched me and just said, oh, hi, my person, ha. Huh. Okay, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. Okay, kiddo. So I just folded it over so I could step her front end across. Now I can just pick this up to rub her neck with it. Okay. I love that she wants to put her nose. So yeah, it's a big deal. Curiosity is starting to come out of her versus fear and defensiveness. What a thing. That's just pretty cool. Good thing I wasn't too tired after all that teaching this clinic come out here and film for you guys. We'd have just missed that little thing. What a day. What a special day. Okay, so now we got this hooked. Now, see how that's in front of her? I need to be paying attention. That wind's blowing. If that blows it up at her and she spooks, I need to be ready to be light on my feet. Okay, all these little things we got to pay attention to. <clears throat> so again, she needs to, yes, that's super. Oh, and you're gonna put your feet on it? You're brave, how'd you get so brave? How'd you get so brave? Step the front end, yes, you're doing just fine, child. Step the front end out and away. Yes, I love you, out there. There you go. Yes, you're doing so good. <clears throat> what a difference. We don't have our hind lead. Let her reset. Ask again. There she has the hind lead. Canner, canner, canner. Slow down come in. That's a pretty picture perfect deal. Hi baby. So now the only way that I want that maybe better, you can just stand right there is good. No, no, no. There is good. There is good. Like that. Good girl. I would love if I could have a feel on her face while she's going and lead her on a particular circle. Notice, we'll do it again, notice I'm not touching her face at all. The rope is just there to kind of manage if I needed to. I'm not yielding her at all with the rope when we're going. I'm just hurting with the stick, okay? Good. Okay, so I'm not giving her any direction. We need to have our hind leg, child. I know, you need to have your hind leg forward. I know, you did just fine, we'll just try it again. Good. 
Thank you. See, I'm letting that slip. I'm not holding her at all to yield her off the lead rope. That would be the next progression is, could I hold her and yield her while she walk trot canters <clears throat> so that I have going, steering, and confidence to that uh, piece? Yeah, look, look at you, nose on me. What a good kid you are. All right, that's all I've got and want to show you today. I want to keep this simple. This is, um, you know, we, it really was meant as a, as a joke, right? Like, I don't think this is a bucking, biting monster, but that, you know, clickbait, blah, blah, blah. That's where she seemed like she was in the beginning, right? She didn't know how to not bite. She was very scared and she had bucked with the saddle and bucked somebody off. <clears throat> this, that thing of being scared, she's just scared of that human on her back. She's just trying to get away. Okay, just trying to protect herself. And so we now are teaching her skills of what to do. Good. So that she can make healthy choices that are beneficial to us, not just her. We kind of spent the week again. It's a shorter week because we had a uh, big clinic over the weekend, but we got this little session in on a Sunday afternoon after everybody got sent home from the clinic. Uh, keep you guys up to date and keep up with her progress for here. So what I would do after next week, I'll be gone with Road to the Horse. Now I'll start riding and can we get towards a trot? We already looked at a little bit of, can I do a little leg yield and move her out? Some of you have noticed and comment, I can't believe you're riding with spurs. Even Ryan Rose looks at me, we were hanging out and he goes, dude, you crazy riding her in your spurs? You know, all it takes is one little thing. And I'm like, I know, I know. We're, it was less about that I'm trying to do anything with a leg she needs to learn how to take the leg, so I'll ride in just um, boots without a spur so I can start to touch her, and she can really feel me a lot of times on her side and get confident with that. That'll be an important part for her to learn. So we're going to be moving into some of those things to release her feet towards a trot and a can or um, week after next when we get back from Road to the Horse. So that's kind of what's coming. And then it'll be time. Uh, it's getting close to the end of the season of me being home and doing training horses or this horse will have to go home. So it'll be get the owner here, get her going in her lessons and start the handoff process of finding how can we take where the owner's at and where the horse is at and put them together. And that's a process and we'll bring you along for all that. Okay, we appreciate again all your wonderful comments. Uh, we love hearing what you're learning through this process of Remy and her training journey hit that like, hit that subscribe. You can check us out on Patreon, full courses on there. We'd love having all of you along for those rides. Uh, and we'll just keep bringing you all the progress updates of Miss Remy. Okay, I'm Jake, we're at Pear Tree Ranch, and we'll see you next time.